So what does this have to do with X-ray imaging? The answer is, right now you're looking at elastic scattering of a tennis ball against a tennis racket. And today we're going to be talking about elastic scattering of X-rays within the body. Hey guys, I'm Brian Nett from HardAlgeWorks.com. We have bite-sized content that's of interest for those in the radiology field, especially technologists. So if that sounds good to you, click below on the subscribe button and then click on that little bell icon so you can get notified when we release new content. So specifically today, we're gonna to be talking about elastic scattering of x-rays by matter. It also has the name Rayleigh scattering and it also has the name uh, coherent scattering. In all these cases, the x-ray is coming in and then it's leaving with the same energy, just like this tennis ball is coming in and leaving with nearly the same energy. So we're starting now on coherent scattering. Coherent scattering, it's one of the three interactions that can take place with diagnostic x-rays and the body. We have separate little videos about Compton scattering and photoelectric effect. Those are the dominant interactions. But for completeness, we have this on coherent scattering. It has other names, elastic scattering, Rayleigh scattering. But at a high level, what's happening is the X-ray photon is coming in. It's interacting with our electron cloud. It's going out, it's scattered, and it has the same energy as it leaves as when it came in. So the analog, if you think of that rubber band ball and you're throwing it against the wall, it's coming off with approximately the same energy it had going in. That's what we call elastic scattering. That's why this interaction is called elastic scattering. Of interest for diagnostic imaging is that it's really only dominant or really only occurring rather at energies below 10 keV. So for a lot of energy spectra, if we're talking about diagnostic imaging, a lot of times there's not very many photons that are making it through the pre-patient attenuation such that they're going to be having x-rays in that range of less than 10 keV. And also the likelihood is dependent on the number of protons, so it's directly dependent on Z. So if you have more protons, you're more likely to have coherent scattering. And it's inversely proportional to one over the energy squared. So as the energy is getting higher, this effect is being reduced. So what we talked about here is we have an interaction that's in addition to Compton scattering and photoelectric. It only occurs at very low energies. Thanks for sticking around to the end, guys. Make sure and check out the next video over there next to me. That one's gonna be on photoelectric and Compton interactions. And those interactions are actually the dominant interactions in the diagnostic x-ray range. We'll see you on the next one.